in different Thank you. <laughs> in, uh, in a wide range of uh, projects. Um, what is interesting with um, Winnie's uh, practice um, is probably uh, Winnie's mind because he's always uh, that person that tries to push limits um, on, on his office, with his project, with his clients. Um, he's the one that usually fights with the clients, but not because of the sake of fighting, but to convince them that certain things need to be done differently. And then he also runs um, the Y Factory um, group at the TU Delft, which is uh, his main, uh, let's say, academic base from where different uh, works, um, that speculates on the future and visions the future but also, I guess, feeds the practice happens. This uh, same, let's say, academic spirit, uh, Winnie is also part of our faculty here at the Master in City and Technology, together with his uh, group from um, the Y Factory. They have been running an intensive workshop uh, this week. All, uh, maybe? Sorry for that. So uh, Winnie has been running a workshop together with Y Factory, together uh, in collaboration with a project that they are doing with uh, Naturalis, uh, Museum Naturalis, which is a center in Leiden in the Netherlands, um, as well as with uh, Iris van Herpen, um, the very well-known um, fashion designer. So in a way, they're all trying to bring together architecture, design, the city, the fashion, biology, technology, and what would that mean um, in the hands of a designer or of an urban thinker? So I think some of the work uh, that has been produced, Winnie will be sharing with us today, but um, I have no more to add rather than um, uh, thanking Winnie for joining us, for all your spirit and energy, and the floor is yours. Hey, very good. Thank you for coming. Let's just start it. It's a, uh, it's rather remarkable uh, to um, have to. Oh, how does this work? Uh, to see, to be here, and to look uh, to also uh, to what you're doing uh, after two years. Um, and I'd, um, I, I enjoy also. Hey, how does this work? Guys, sorry. I don't know. Can you help here? It is fantastic that um, to have a lecture that there is only one or two that are live and the rest are on Zoom. So I feel rather old fashioned and I love it. So because it um, and, and, and of course, there are advantages for Zooms here and there that I don't have to go to uh, New York last weekend. And you could see it indeed with the beautiful, say, films by the Guggenheim, uh, where ultimately, but in the beginning, they forced us to come. But then the whole gang all over the world. But then uh, in the end, because of Chinese, Taiwanese, Japanese, that couldn't care. So there was a majority. And then they turned it into the film format. They did it, by the way, very beautifully. Um, uh, it's a very beautiful, say, film program, very sharply made, and with also some new thinkers that are there. So this is what we are in now. So I will um, have two, two parts of the lectures today. First, I will talk about the Y Factory and the program that we have done uh, this week uh, together again as part of the every time, every year or every two years to be here with you. Um, I've always loved to be challenged in that way because it means that I have to give a new lecture and it means also that I have to do it just five minutes before uh, the presentation. No, I did it over the weekend, don't worry. But then, uh, and that is then also giving me also an opportunity to, to bring things together. It's not bad to give lectures, but actually, or to be challenged, but by that, and I'm happy that that somehow comes back because in a way, I must say the Zoom lectures I, um, it's not my thing. So then um, there are two things uh, that I would like to show is the work of the Y Factory with you. And, and, the, uh, and secondly, how does it affect, say, our practice MVRV? And uh, what is the relationship between research and, uh, uh, and say, the built environment, the built products? So just to uh, 
to give you some slides on uh, where you haven't been maybe in Delft, how we try to teach before Corona to make products, to sell books, to talk also with people and um, lately, of course, with other means. And it is basically the last 10 years about the triangle on the future city. That means on one hand, how, um, that it, we are thinking in terms of modeling, like how it's a theoretically in the model for Ryan, say so you have one million uh, city and you do it in a kind of regular way or um, uh, average way, change one parameter and that city will change from now to then. That means if you fly, then all the city uh, flies out in the end. In the viewing sections, we try to apply it and on different locations, like in Barcelona, in certain cases. And in the controller, we bring it together, together to basically to software, to uh, scripting. Um, so that leads to this book. And um, some of the things that we did here at Jack also come back ultimately in this publication. So it takes around two years to make a publication, um, um, including studios, um, in different say, situations, not only in Delft, not only here also. We have a strong relationship with Melbourne, um, to give a, an example, to, uh, to make that work. These are the titles. Some of them, there are about 12, have been made. So we could say uh, one, uh, one per year uh, is uh, what we can do. Uh, unfortunately, not more. And that is, an, um, but that they all say explore pieces of the future city. And pieces because the holistic performance is, is good, but on the other hand, the, the holistic is, uh, is hyper splintered in uh, many, say, focuses or many um, uh, specificities. And that is then uh, bring, um, brought together in this case. So what is next? I give you how does it work at the Y Factory? I, I start from XL. Uh, that is, say, how we come from a planetary, say, holistic perspective. And uh, notate over the 10 years, uh, indeed, dr drastic demands what the planet could be. Model it, how they are, because of that, that is transforming this skewed ball um, somewhere in the sky uh, uh, and leading to uh, necessities that we need to do. So here, a model how density will change when we open up our borders. For, and then, yes, they will go to the Netherlands or the uh, people will go uh, to uh, Southeast Asia. So that leads to hypothesis that you, we try to model and that we have uh, uh, put uh, uh, for the Davo area. And that is um, it's a kind of a framework of like positioning or relating uh, projects to each other. I want to bring just pre-COVID um, uh, Domus, uh, now Jean Novel is uh, just started, so it's good to uh, see uh, that it continues, although it's very, 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 very Italian, maybe too Italian, uh, uh, if I have explored it, I'm sorry, but uh, we try to change uh, uh, to have no Italian in a magazine because that would save space, uh, because it's, uh, I know how long they can talk, so that would lead, to, that would have given more space for us to say something, but it didn't. Um, what we try to do, what about everything is urbanism. And I want to use it as an upbeat for what we are doing now, that everybody is urbanism in the end. And um, it was a stack of, um, of uh, say, 12 issues that come together that explore uh, this um, everythingness in urbanism to so every contribution thinkable to the, to the bigger scale. Um, by many actors that are and that are spread over the over the magazine in that year, it leads to a sequence of um, of attentions um, from a starting point with uh, younger kids uh, in Milano to think about uh, Milan, how beautiful Milan could be in their eyes. I, I still love that model because every it's of course it's ugly and it's uh, and uh, everything is uh, uh, is weird in that but they represent a lot so the mini stories of the children to fantasize about milano um, uh, leads to beautiful structures as this dna dna tower on the middle um, and also to uh, ultimately to a letter to the mayor to uh, ask say permission building say permission for these elements or open up the case a little bit in a very introvert city in the uh, to and uh, it leaded 
if I look back to 2019, so what was before, uh, then there was a world that was painted by agencies and um, explored by different, say, writers. Uh, this atlas of the end of the world is a beautiful, say, way of addressing the transformation from now to then. Uh, you have, a, say, a status quo, which was be defined by this kind of, say, this is not Beijing, but simply the Dolomiti, in, uh, where it also uh, occurs. Um, uh, thinking about the water systems by this uh, writer, thinking about, say, the swap in, um, in biodiversity, um, imagining that the crust, say, the first thousand meters below, are of an incredible importance to somehow monitor and to be more aware with each other about that and to think about the products that comes out of that. Um, there are solutions after this urgencies, and that is uh, one of them was about density. So, uh, see how can we um, look to the the needs uh, in this urgencies? Need uh, 600 million homes, and how to do that? Uh, how they do it in uh, New York that becomes unaffordable uh, these days for that? How they do it in in um, in France or in the southern part of France? It leads also to inclusivity to do it together. Um, uh, where projects were monitored and showed um, uh, in different ways, like this beautiful, say, Quebecian uh, uh, proposal, or in Albania by some of our colleagues, or here in Ghana or in Niger, how they uh, monitor that. Um, it was uh, developed on the level of can we create a fertile uh, movement again and fertility for that future? Um, here, an invitation and uh, to. Uh, Stefano to continue in Milano, the one tower, wah, but a, a half a city, then we can talk about it. And then it has an effect. And it actually is the point that I come back to later in this lecture. Happily is now book, making a book about this. So it just came out. So you can check if this image would fit in it. Um, you could go further with that green dip uh, here. Uh, and it works because uh, there was a lot of this session that year if um, it is too artificial or that it come, becomes a new kind of nature. Uh, we are not there yet and it takes a while, but in general things work like these projects that can be uh, uh, visualized here. Like this is a beautiful one in Shenzhen, also there it works uh, in the Fanke. This one is a bit vulnerable, just finished now. Um, it is um, because it's very solitary and even New York is doing some things. And also Russia with Strelka made uh, and West Aid made uh, improvements. Um, so there is a lot of poetry in that landscape uh, to imagine this new greenness, but also in the, the in the material. So the design, as is also done partly at the Yak, how to in, increase say the natural factor in our making of products is uh, making uh, this kind of elements. And last but not least, and here we uh, say also. Um, met with uh, with Iris for the first time, uh, furniture, or, uh, sorry, uh, say fashion, no, the clothing, wearables, haute couture, as a group, could help enormously to make it uh, better. And like this, for instance, is, uh, is showing, and Iris is joining us tonight, but also comes back later in uh, this lecture, how we collaborate um, with these elements. And yes, also in the end, films can be maybe better, a reference to this, uh, this beauty, uh, but silly film is always uh, is still vivid. So that was. But what can we do for Domus? I let's look back uh, in, and then we explored what our, every article did uh, to it and say how much it contributed somehow to these bigger themes, how they were ordered, and where how much say square kilometer it somehow could manage with that or uh, uh, observe with that. So this map, this is what we could do in 2019 with about 1200 pages or whatever it was uh, to do that. And um, so it became almost a book. Uh, I tried to bring it out in 2020, but in the best Italian tradition, they didn't do it. So there's, um, um, and that is still for on the agenda to make it doable. Yeah, I'm annoying. With that. <laughs> What's next? This is like a way of trying to understand how we all are doing and what are we are contributing to an agenda that uh, that is is dealing about say objectives and the objectives are quite widely and how do to, to explain that I use this phrase don't you want to be and then you get a question about responsible openness curious because we have to share objectives I cannot do it on myself 
They cannot, they are not completely neutral. They are fluid, fluid but the no mayor, almost no mayor, and uh, uh, maybe some Russian cities not, is want to talk about responsibility or openness or curiosity or do it maybe in another way, by the way. No one is against green or energy producing. Uh, so this list is so obvious. And there is actually a huge list. And, and you see that in the, since then, since 2019, the last two years, especially because of the COVID, you get this list now every time in every presentation. Yes, we should be inclusive, yet we should be so, uh, so bigger themes that has been addressed by more and more people come back to uh, also to the urban and spatial agenda. And that, I'm, uh, that is my shopping list, but I would say what the future city could be. And in the end, also this more visual components about excitement or beauty or loveliness are uh, also part to make this uh, wonderful, uh, say, directions of the future uh, and to give that list and a perspective. So what is next? I want to go back again uh, to another element in order to phrase the combination of small and big. Um, uh, and to get that agendas to work. I take you to a visit I did years ago uh, to the North Pole uh, with uh, more designers to be inspired to talk about issues that were happening there with the oil industry, etc. But there is one, say, philosophical book about this, what can we learn from an extreme condition. Why? Because there are... Um, an, maybe luxuries in it, in, in that area that we miss in other places in the world. So you go to another site in order to be inspired. This is maybe the most exotic one, or one of the exotic one, to, um, um, to work on it. So we made um, uh, different observations. So because uh, in, um, in the North Pole area, of course, it's 24 seven, it's uh, half of the year, um, um, functioning as a, as a fully, say, uh, a sunny area. So what we imagined is, um, could we do that also then in other areas? Can we make longer days? Can we do that in such a way, like these novels that you sometimes see in Jap Japanese literature, and uh, to make extra suns and to, um, to use them basically as a personal, so that everybody his or her son um, with uh, him or her uh, along. And can that device then uh, say enlighten the the yeah our cities in a more uh, direct way? We come back to that. If you look later to the table, there's one of the that took over basically this kind of um, uh, say personalized uh, light system. Uh, this can be done uh, by this kind of uh, FLPs with this kind of sections uh, on uh, 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 how that could be then imagined how a small device can have such an incredible say impact and that this is my my son that i would experience every time um, and the second element is the silence in the north pole when, i mean also when there is snow here, uh, in prague uh, two days ago then you then you it, it is i love it because then somehow no cars are there some students come back to that later i, I saw it today I didn't know it in advance. I did it, this lecture somehow parallel to what you did. You uh, this, but a silent city has a has a, some kind of beauty. So how to do that? Eh? How can we um, make say clusters in this um, in the in our air that say that jellyfy with a sea gel um, with the noise? So if there is noise, it goes around it because of this uh, uh, gel and absorbs then uh, the sound that would lead to beautiful say, uh, new tgv lines that you could uh, could see that what surrounds by this kind of smoke and if i'm on my terrace in a higher point then this would be my view to uh, say this part of uh, of chicago where i would then uh, uh, that it would dampen all uh, the current say uh, uh, elements that are uh, there it means also that um, uh, when I produce sound, then it comes to me, the cloud. But when I keep silent, then when I sleep, then actually it opens up again and it becomes uh, uh, very beautiful. Another one is your halo or halo. That is, uh, uh, I mean, I hate all the fences everywhere. I hate borders somehow or protectionism is kind of, how do we do that in the future? There is nothing like that in the North Pole. So imagine that we can skateboard like this and that there are some more devices that I, um, and I don't have to be scared of all this intervenes. How can I do that? And that is then this device, say, your suit, that somehow tries to notate that there's danger next to you. You have to trust in it, I know. And the researchers about it could do that 
uh, the work. And that leads to, um, uh, yeah, say, a place where openness would be. Uh, uh, if I want to have forest, how can I do that? So here you see an effect. Uh, if there is one forest, say, a central park, but then the rest is, is mirrored, then it's, uh, and it's activated by these uh, mirrors and these sections, then boof, then it somehow becomes like that. And our cities turn their uh, echoing itself um, this is 10 years ago, huh? I come back later, because somehow, funnily, it's now just built in Rotterdam. So that is a, um, how things are going. You asked me to think about that relationship between, uh, between research and, uh, uh, and making it takes 10 years. That's what I would say. The horizon is another one. I, um, I'm fascinated by the concept that, say, the, the North Pole is infinite and that, that, that gives uh, an, an, a perspective that creates somehow calmness in your head. And it is a, a, an in claustrophobia. It would be interesting to, to imagine. So imagine that you have this view in the very core of your house and that you see nature. So we try to make an image if everything would be transparent. So imagine this like poof. And uh, how far can I see uh, uh, through all the houses? And do I need then certain kind of elements to think about intimacy also in that moment? So you see here clothes, again, the relationship between environment and clothes come back with mirrors that where everything touches away from the intimate, uh, uh, say, uh, zones that can be toilets, can be. Uh, bedrooms um, and 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 you get then this uh, combination. Um, so here are all the technology is imagined at the, and how it looks like to um, with all the pieces that are there. How I look uh, through the streets and through the other houses of people and uh, how this city could be imagined with always a horizon. Still, it's a dream for me to make that somewhere. I don't know yet where. If it's is it now maybe in the future on the top of a mountain of the Matterhorn that we could do that. Um, um, but uh, let's see how far we come. But the next exercise that we did after this kind of perspectives, uh, that, so how to, to make a small scale with an, a desire, uh, how to combine that, the two cities. Um, I have, this is still on the base of current, say, imagination. But last, one of the last times at YAC, we worked on from now to then. So, and looking to what technology can do in the coming hundred years from 3D printing, it's cute at the moment, but it comes to an end because it's not reversible yet. So I want to, so if I, how can we do that? That it transforms directly on it. It's very problematic in terms of sizing still. So there is a lot of work to do in the 3D printing section to do that. In the robotized, you are working on it as a school, but also there, uh, piece by piece, uh, we still need to work on it to, to make that a human uh, component in that, that helps to what's from now to then. So there were some exercises on algae to, uh, to show and how algae in the future with other kind of compositions can appear in the coming 100 years, step by step, uh, and how that could uh, lead to a dream that gradually a city, like in this case Rotterdam, would change over time its uh, appearance and probably also its angles of sun that we needed and how it can maybe even become this kind of new algae clouds of the city. About self-healing, certain students also today talked about it. How it's it's an enormous important factor to uh, to work on it in every material. It that is not only in concrete how to do self-heal. It will lead to aggregates that self-heal. I think is anyway one of the not beside wood one of the most important subjects to consider the coming time because we need it for inertia. We needed to uh, needed for for optimize uh, dim, different say clusters of material into into this composites that is that is shown on this uh, graph, and that also uh, then if you think about a city that would turn into this healing aspect, optimizing itself gradually, you would this kind of um, almost hipster dreams. If we want to breathe more, also our skins can help. And uh, also over time, now smaller ones, later ones, uh, combined ones um, are under production and under imagination. These are fantasies of the students, how that every step could help. And that could lead then also to another kind of, say, appearance of the city uh, from the different cells from small to big that work on the porosity of our cities and the ventilated parts that are in between them to make this uh, breathing considerable. If we work more on this aerial robot systems that are uh, that are flying around, 
that is this, this was an example also how such a small thing can transform maybe our uh, building industry in the nearby future if i do it with uh, the 3d printing of and this map shows the wide uh, varieties of, of 3d printings and how to do that in the beginning decennia and uh, that needs still cranes to do that do i can i find another kind of infrastructure for doing it another kind of complex uh, to make it and then gradually i have this new amalgams that i could apply can i do it with um, microtexture also one of the dresses by Euro Iris is also dealing with that um uh, that grows itself uh, still on, on the primitive side that we know that to be honest uh, how to petrify this uh, this culture's temper do we see it as a as a to, as an element that can grow over time is under what kind of conditions is what this kind of say films then start uh, to uh, to uh, imagine if i do it even with, uh, with 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 trees and also there there's kind of new binding techniques that we can imagine in in um in in in, in plantation and in species uh, that also leads then finally to um uh, overtake our not only our skins but also our interior in construction uh, method so what's next at, at, at that same moment, we, when we were working on these technologies, um, then uh, it touched about also what human beings do in this uh, element. And not only human beings, also products, also animals, also um, um, smaller pieces uh, could be done. In this case, by say showing what, um, what the effect could be on algae on our bodies uh, in the future or what drones can do um, so they followed basically the same uh, uh, research to mirror that on our uh, on our bodies or the, uh, to see the, how the robotics can help in our bodies over time how 3d printing is already helping and in the future even more detailed in and around our bodies and how automation can uh, find its way in uh, in the agenda of the of the body uh, and i still want to show that now in the in the perspective of say the exercise that we are trying to deepen this half year um, uh, with uh, Naturalis, with Iris van Herpen, uh, with the VU, um, and as a first show in the, the valley. What was, I still want to call this for one moment. If I talk about the relationship of body and architecture, Barba uh, or Barba Papa was actually the, the most beautiful one of the last years, I still remember. You know, this guy that will, transforms in a mirror, transforms in a piano, or that becomes, uh, 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 yeah, like for today, an, 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 an emblem of itself. Um, so what is next is that with our new, say, kind of uh, molecules uh, of, uh, of nano uh, rubber, we can make varieties in the connections, uh, not more than 15%. But if we apply that, uh, on our behavior, and here you see I'm watching television. Uh, uh, my wife comes uh, uh, home, uh, takes a shower, and then we sit together. It means that we don't need a shower anymore, or, or we don't, don't need the closet. Please shrink, is what it says. And if we uh, sleep together, then also the rest can uh, be shrunk. And if we we raise, have a, uh, take a shower, um, and we go to the office, up, okay, the rest can shrink, only one guy there. Uh, it's, it's going and over time you see what we need in our spaces up till we end in the evening this has an effect on the environment also because that changes also our neighbors how they can uh, act to that that is a fascinating say combination that uh, how it, it moves uh, uh, away and i sometimes i have to think remember that when, when my kids went to the ikea bubble bath then uh, you throw one kid in and mm -hmm. He didn't touch the others it just moved a little bit so that's what's happening in this case when rubber is in between movements could be um, uh, still sustainable um, so what we try to do is i still love this film is um, because our ultimate skin is also the the space we need so here in the evening or in, in, when sleeping i need nothing i can raise then i need to walk i need a space in front of me and a space in the back when I take a shower, then um, no, I light, I want to open it. This is like Hermann Herzberger, how he would do it. This is how I meet my son, top, with his bubble. How I find water everywhere comes to me. That's what is a flexible material could do. I can swim everywhere uh, at that moment, dive in uh, this collective, these changeable water bodies. 
the sun is following. And it also wonders then who is moving or what is moving in this case. But, so philosophically, I find it a nice moment. Showers are, of course, dramatic and nicer than in vowels. Clothes come to you in any format and adapt to, in the same, say, molecule act to you. In a, uh, it can be, can be heaten up and then it becomes your spaghetti plate. And then you sit down uh, with this new table that just comes to you from your collection. Um, you watch films uh, because it's interactive, this uh, material. And you can even information in different ways comes to you. So there was a, this was 24-7 uh, movie that was done to explore the, the potential of that kind of, say, dressing that we have. Far-fetched, I know. Um, but on the other hand, hmm, closer by, they, they, you uh, think, and when I look back to it now, then also what we talk about these days uh, on what, what, what your clothing or what your body can do in relation to the bigger picture, then this might be an ultimate dream or nightmare, as some people say, because it, yes, what it is. Uh, um, we went or further on it uh, to see how that, how to make that more feasible, uh, like this, uh, say, capturing a moment by, like, Moobridge, like, uh, uh, photos to calculate the space around it, to <laughs> consider uh, the, like, uh, how much you need in this kind of halos, uh, and how you negotiate with your neighbor in, uh, um, on the, uh, in this kind of direction. So what is next is that we have tried to apply it in material. So can we make a, a, a carpet that can be also become a table or a bed? Can we uh, make uh, napkins that somehow talk with each other? I touch one and the other one reacts uh, uh, on the table that's next to you. Can we make walls that also talk to you when you become angry? The wall reacts to you and what, how does it react? Does it help you? So you see a, a mechanism of say again about like your environment, your skin, your uh, skin that can be to you, a skin that can be slightly further away, uh, three meters or four meters. Uh, uh, and, and here you can do it not by talking, you can also do it by touching or half touching. So there was a wide range of experiments to, uh, to an understand say uh, this combination. Also movement. Um, so that, that will be an important one, how our environment react to, to us and how can I react to that moving environment. So what is next is after this rubber time is also to go from the, uh, uh, from the anorganic to the more organic components. How can it also give space for birds, for plants, um, for, uh, say, evolution, uh, for uh, change? Uh, that is, uh, uh, that question came here. Huh? Okay years ago, and I still see that happening. Um, how to tackle that? We organized a step-by-step yeah, -step method, I have to be honest. So first, uh, to do it only with plants. The green dip is about that. I'm happy to announce that the book is there in the, in the, uh, in the coming months. And, that, that, and it explores basically what you can do with our cities. That is 3% of the world, say the same size as India. And if I make it, if I skip the streets, then it's the same size as Madagascar. Um, this Madagascar pro produces say um, has currently 56 percent of the global population. That will be 68. Um, the impact is uh, uh, tremendous because it, uh, they cause uh, nearly 70 percent for the of the total, total CO2 emissions, 56 percent of the water consumption, and 75 percent of the energy use. So that means that cities only, if you only think about them in the future, they need to be compensated three globes. So that is a calculation that comes from, from the 80s, but it now more focused with the new technologies, this is the agenda. This could be leading that there is an, you could do it also solve it surplus. So that means that this would be uh, Hong Kong in the future, that Ram made a nice thing, but that it could become better if it would be uh, giving space to that or that it looks, this hutong would. And so the green maker was what we invented here to make that more visible. Software that when you open it, it, it you see all the species of the different climates and you, with all that um, say what it needs and what it gives. It needs soil, it needs water, it gives cooling, it gives birds. And that it, so this plus and minuses remain and also for the skin development an, an intriguing tool. So it leads to a collection uh, also, technically, what you can do with the different, say, technologies and, and a canvas to apply on it. So here, a Manhattan piece, 
um, where you select what kind of uh, uh, techniques you were going to do on the roofs, on the facades, on the uh, interior and on the streets. That leads to a beautiful Manhattan, I would say. And immediately it's only dressing up, it's only a skin. It's very simple. And it, it, why can't we do it? Why can we do that with our clothes? And why can't we do it with our, our uh, cities would help so much. It would give also something back enormously. Manhattan would, for a lot of effects, would be better in terms of radiation, in terms of cooling, in terms of water uh, management. And so why don't we do it? And then when I walk on Fifth Avenue, then, ah, finally I'm like, this is a good compensation of the shit behind it. Or when I would be um, in, uh, say, uh, uh, another city, uh, uh, no, it's not here, like Dubai, and we could transform it into something like that. Of course, other water issues. Then wow. Then I would the bush would somehow become nice at that uh, with this cactus world. So this is um, what we show soon. So what is next uh, is then the calculation of this, uh, these kind of suggestions. So it was born here that how much the, um, say it would give to the albedo effect. How would it, how much biomass would be stored or carbon would be stored? by this uh, versus the existing situations and how much the temperature would drop. One, I mean, and you have read it in some of the newspapers, one, if we do it for every city like this, you have one degree uh, uh, Celsius or Fahrenheit would be, would be helped. That is still 50% of the agenda. So what is next? It's not only the cooling factor that is helping, it's also the, the diversity, the biodiversity that comes in the same pocket range, this book uh, with the same sponsor, The Coming Time. This analyzes our, um, our complexity in one specific way, dynamic in food chains. And, and you see how many animals do I need to have a fox or a cheetah in this, uh, uh, in this climate. Uh, it stores that it, um, uh, in its uh, uh, software. And uh, then we look to different, say, products on the top. If we like in the green dip, if we apply it on that canvas, in this case, Lille in North France, um, with the products that are invented or that are done by different, uh, say, students and existing products that you can get. So there's a beautiful range of it. Then in, for a tropical rainforest, I need this for the facades. I need this, say, for the uh, roofs. I need this for the edges. If I want to work in an, in an ocean coast, uh, then I get this kind of components. Our buildings would be glass and completely matching with, say, the toilet system or the shower system. If I am in a tundra or in a modest, moderate uh, uh, climate, then I need these products uh, to be uh, together on all the surfaces. And then I would have this in Lille. Somehow I have deer in the middle, I have birds everywhere, up to in, in our interiors. So what is next? I, there, this is not so readable. Um, that is that we in, um, work for the municipality of Amsterdam. There's a good lecture in to, online, first of March, of the, with all the ecologists in uh, Amsterdam to work, in this case of a section of a tramway, the, to make that also accessible for animals. These are the, it's a, uh, the plots that are done for that. In the same way, also with bricks, to give new bricks to them, um, which uh, could absorb sound that would lead to, for instance, more bats that would into, um, and especially this kind of orphanage um, area would be then uh, again uh, a beautiful. So the series of lists are um, partly under production uh, to be after, say, these five years, uh, the canals of Amsterdam get open stones for fishes and for amphibians. Um, uh, the, the, this, uh, uh, this protected area gets this kind of bricks. So it, it is working, small and big are combined. So what is next? Um, uh, we are working on the next IBA in uh, Munich that uh, this is cute, I always say, uh, this is better. And uh, uh, where uh, all the green stuff somehow is used now for uh, the roofscapes. And ultimately, that means that the effect would be that the planet becomes from blue, becomes, uh, becomes green. Um, I go further. Now I will trans go to the, this takes a minute. Yeah. I'm still shared, can you help? 
Is it, or should I start sharing again? Sorry. Okay. Where is it? No. So what is next? Um, I tried to find a way in the forming, say, former 30 minutes to, to explore already, to see the relationship between small and bigger. And that leads to the, to the element that, that the issue that everything, every body, every piece is urbanism. When I make a better toilet, I touch urbanist uh, agenda. Um, and that will happen also with our bodies. We had this dream with uh, uh, Naturalis with the sapiens that they're making the new institute slash museum in Amsterdam in Valley opening up in October uh, to um, make maybe an, an exhibition on this combination how small and big scale could be imagined the institute sapiens is it called is going to think about our Anthropocene and to consider maybe evaluate that um, uh, over time. So the University of Amsterdam is uh, involved at the High Universiteit and uh, to, to, to stage that uh, together. So I'm very happy that there is now sufficient money to start a lot of process together to get it finance and to have this combination of say um, uh, almost like a workshop area, uh, exhibitions uh, and a library that, uh, that comes uh, alive. So for this relationship between a body and uh, and environment. I I still love this painting uh, because you see so many bodies, so many people with all they have their own say characteristics, their, their own parameters and their own um, obsessions. And I could imagine that uh, we could explore together with Iris van Herpen maybe this a scenery of um, of persons that you can approach, and that can be combined say at that also with the environment. How can that be, so if you make a, a dress or a piece of couture that would uh, breathe and that helps the oxygen system, then I can immediately add also a city that would do the same somehow. If I would um, think about like how can our um, uh, skins help biodiversity, there are people that love uh, always a rat on top of its shoulder. I don't know if people will like mosquitoes. Is it what kind of pollen could that be? And not everybody likes it. It's a dangerous subject. And is it then uh, translated to material only? But I can immediately imagine this kind of relationship. If I can, uh, the things about growing elements uh, that, that our dresses uh, grow, then that has a relationship with how we grow our facades. Or if we can imagine that things are unexpected that they become wild because of different circumstances, then that can also be a combination of that. Can it give light? Uh, uh, and then we can make this project comes back into the picture. Can we reflect in order to enlarge it? And also in the, in the workshop, we deepen that. How can that be combined with the environment? Can it be sense, create senses of, of, of what we need? So can it, our dresses also add energy? then we can also make environments that add energy. Can we grow? Then also a city should glow. Can we be more equate? Or is this a stupid direction to do only one element for everybody? This is, um, so you see diversity already come in and as a, as a subject to develop that also in it. Can we be more transparent? And then yes, that could be helpful for our environments. Can it be uh, moving uh, the, the, so the dresses and also our facades can do that. Some of you have done that here in Barcelona also uh, to cool elements. Can it be acoustic? Can it, be, can it help to fly? Can it help to flow? Uh, can it help to transform? And um, were our first say connotations when we started our uh, collaboration? It was beautiful to, to see pieces uh, here and uh, collaboration of Iris with uh, a glass blower where like certain stuff goes through you so that it um, um, notates where uh, what is happening in your in your body a beautiful piece and somehow we compare that with the, the valley in Amsterdam 
uh, that it indicates that we have um, uh, also such a kind of environment. There are references in this case for such a kind of uh, the infrastructure of our body. You, you can have see how this plankton is doing that. Uh, you can see how our, how our rhizomes are worked on that, how our uh, body in Napoli is uh, dealing. Uh, so there is a lot of, say, thinking in the infrastructure of our um, um, of our cities, our environments, and our uh, objects, and uh, how it's uh, also simulated now in our uh, worlds. So this is an image then of what the valley could be and how we can combine that. And that addresses also the larger scale. Here, an image of Amsterdam and of um, Paris, how that um, leads to this kind of levels of, um, and even in the flight systems, how infrastructure is notated. Um, this glass infra world here, we developed a model of, um, uh, of the valley, of the building in Amsterdam, and you see how in, incredible detailed actually all the ductwork is. So it's not only the electricity, it's also the one uh, in order to measure, for instance, our plantation in, in the building is covered by that, but I don't see it. I want to have a building that looks like that, to, where we can monitor uh, uh, and what is the next. Another was the, mycelium, uh, the, 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 the dress that, uh, uh, the mycelium the dress, uh, where it's explored how that production technique, how that can be optimized and how that, that can still say, um, use oxygen to grow. And a beautiful dress that uh, somehow could uh, reflect on what it could uh, do. And how we try to connect that. So there is, of course, literature on this issue. There are, again, some slides from the YAC uh, workshop that comes back into our mind if we think about that, uh, uh, that dress. So we're working on a storyboard uh, to um, think what, um, uh, say, how a, a block of a city can look like on, under this kind of, uh, say, mycelium approach. Here's the valley appearing and how it could turn into a factory of, say, the skin uh, of the valley. This will not happen, but this could be a dream of our next valley. Uh, and the infrastructure that is uh, needed um, uh, for making that. And that leads to hopefully this, uh, say, dream that then echoes um, or combines with, uh, say, the, the, the piece of, um, uh, of the body. I will not show the film that's done by Eline, but that, uh, that's not enough time for that uh, today. So what is next is um, an exhibition that makes this relationship between the body and the environment and that we are now like uh, developing in, uh, in the building. So what's next is our workshop. Uh, here uh, you see images of today of the discussion um, um, both in the room and outside the room and the collection of elements that are there with thematics behind it and I, I think the students did a great job on finding the way how you can interrelate the parameters how and how uh, no, no, no. so one one technique what that could mean for build for the built environment as for uh, say the couture of or the dresses. I go further. So I invite you to uh, to be and to look at it after this. Uh, uh, now it's time to think uh, more in detail to how it affects um, our our work, and I use. Obviously, um, our office uh, for that, um, which is um, which has grown a little bit. These are the commercial things. Huh? The, the skip them. Huh? These are our offices in some places. This is our scope, um, our presence, our staff, a bit growing our projects. But what is next is um, I will order them in to ref to think about the subjects that I talked about in the first, say, 40 minutes, 45 minutes. And uh, so are we making now and uh, using that, uh, that cities that come out of the, out of that kind of reflections? The, the most reflected one is the mirror city. I want to explain a little bit deeper the depot because you didn't visit it this week. So it is uh, nice to take you to this area in Rotterdam. Uh, this is how it looked before 
the museum quarter uh, with the park of um, of Yves Brunier and Rem Colas, um, um, which was basically a series of rooms where this room didn't function um, simply because it's too wet and um, not the right species. So what was next was that because the wetness appeared in the climate change in 10 years ago in this area where it was flooded, and um, where the cellars of the museum were flooded and touched all the art. That was the moment that um, the decision was to make um, a, an, uh, an archives that was not in the soil anymore, but, and then of course, outside of the city. The, the um, yeah, Charles X at that moment said, can't we do it in the city? So we made a series of models to make that thinkable on different places. And uh, one of them was this, this big table, where up, oh, then lifted to 35 meters. So then the coming uh, 300 years, you would be okay. And you make this kind of ballroom and Mona Lisa comes down and up. And, uh, so you would have a perfect, say, experience. And uh, uh, um, that helped to raise money because the city said, I want to make a museum or an archive building. But if you want to do a public archive building, an open archive building, because that's only reason that we would permit you to make that building in a city, in the inner city, then you have to find the rest of the money. That has, so from 50 million to 85 million was then done by this kind of images. Sponsors came in, foundations came in, um, uh, other collectors came in to pay that, uh, that gap because it's, yeah, it simply costs more to make a public entity. So that lead to, this, um, to the competition and then to the winning concept of, uh, um, of the chosen area, uh, ultimately, that's there in a circle next to the Boymans, but actually an element that is neutral because it wants to um, facilitate not only itself and not only the museum, but also the NAI or HNI or the Kunsthal or the other institutes that surround it. So how to make something that doesn't look like another one or how can we make a building that looks like everybody is what this wants to and share it. So this is the site, this is the, the blue route, this is the program, quite a fat thing in, in, uh, in a park, that's a discussion. So to make it like responsible, you make it circular, you can, there's no corner, so you can always see people and go around. You make it as a minimum uh, as possible, the, the footprint, so that you make the plaza bigger and uh, so that you have a good and maximum roof terrace for trees that optimizes these views and then to add uh, uh, mirrors to it so that it reflects or if visually enlarges the environment uh, the plaza and the, you can look around the corner and also uh, more sky and to have the existing park on top of it and compensation uh, act for that and then you have this new landscape that can be used as part of a sequence of gardens uh, which is the museum uh, garden. Uh, this has a view like this. So in orange, you see the public areas in the building. The footprint is small. Um, half of the ground floor is basically security. And, uh, and uh, the other half is, is, a, is a cafe, an entrance. And uh, then here you see it, how the, the art drops down uh, because everything has to be up 10 meters. So for the flooding, and uh, that is then above. Uh, it's a round kind of central atrium that, that turns it into a kind of prison feeling, and, um, in a, but actually in a positive way, day and night. This is during the day and in the night you can see it, which you can do again since a couple of days uh, after the COVID to go to the restaurant. Then on every floor is something orange for restoring or for uh, showing things. Um, these are the and it ends up in um, in the roof where the, the compensation of the forest uh, is made uh, with this kind of cross of activities. So that transforms this plaza now into that. That was the dream. If I come closer, I can see myself. I can see the park. I can see the horizon, and I can see this Fata Morgana. So what is next is simply to show. Because I think, yeah, we're also in architecture school. Huh? Let's, let's also be practical today and go into that. Um, this is maybe the most important part of the whole building, the piles. They are mini piles because I, the water has to go down and the, to continue. And how can this heavy load then balance on these piles? The piles were also in the end rocking because of the pressure of the water. They moved a meter to the left during the, the during pumping. We had to compensate that at night with 
types of, uh, of weight um, uh, made by, I think, lorries that were like working between, say, 12 o'clock in the night and 6 o'clock in the morning to stabilize these walking piles. That was further than in the, this vessel uh, connected and uh, then built up. So it is a floating device. It's an Ark of Noah somehow. And then it continued up to the, to, to the top. What was next was, of course, the facade that was made in China in the, um, um, with this scripting. So hyper important also in your school to make that doable so that the bending will be precise. And when they are made in an, in an oven, that you, the corners have the, the tolerance of yeah, maximum a couple of mil uh, to do that. They went then shipped to the Rotterdam. Here they are. They're checked in its uh, gradual from transparency levels, how that could, and how it would look like, and how, if they are, um, the color is correct. It cannot be brown. So the glass has to be silver uh, in order to be neutral. And uh, but with the triple bent glass, takes a lot of efforts to do at that. So we made the building three times. And uh, the good thing about glass is that you can recycle. So, so what is next? Uh, touching the planet was a discussion. So how we made glass that bends horizontally in the end, so that when you come closer uh, to the building, it is uh, uh, like a pot that is also on a bit of an expensive detail, uh, to, uh, to be honest. So what is next? The doors are important. How, uh, how can I imagine that, how they open? So um, these are the details of the door. They are made in the, in the, uh, close to Rotterdam. And uh, they are positioned in, and now they can open and close. So you see how it smoothly opens and closes, and how it becomes like uh, Simsalabim uh, and or Thunderbirds landing on in Rotterdam and celebrating uh, the time that you need to go into the vessel. What is next? Of course, the mirrors. How they reflect the institutes. How they reflect the, the new pavements. How they reflect the the city. That, uh, with a nicer, safe uh, skyline than New York, and how it is day and night in its appearance, and how it also uh, this is Ruisdal in uh, in the next step. What is next is the cloud. Um, so one part we have to cover because the reflection was too much for the uh, psychiatry psych uh, uh, institute next to it for children. They cannot uh, against the reflection. Okay, so we monitored completely and screened it off um, with this element uh, that helps. So it's a dialogue. And so of the of architecture is not bad when you do that. It's uh, just showing what it can be. So what is next is, of course, the art experience from the ground floor where the art touches down. Going to the atrium, how it's now developed with a zigzag of stairs, where I, um, there are different, say, glass boxes where art of the archives can go out and can be uh, exhibited. You can see the front and the back. Uh, uh, in every department has its one. How you can climb further and go in between the art, then go to the rings with, um, with windows, where you can see, you can go inside and open uh, the racks with the help of uh, people, depends on the climate. There are 50 different climates, by the way. And how you then can explore, it's a very democratic way of, of art, I would say, of showing art. Because you can choose it yourself, and it's not curated only by time and material. We go further. There are open uh, there are open spaces to exhibit. Now, one of them to see. There's even going further, and you see even art hanging above you. And you can walk on top of it. Um, um, is now this uh, exhibition that's pulled out, and then end up in the in the restaurant uh, on the roof. So what is next, of course, is that roof um, forest. So the technology of the roof um, is here experimented. So what we did in the green dip here uh, in Yak is now developed. Uh, uh, it, the, the trees are trained uh, for four years to grow their roots horizontally so that they are maximized. You put extra water below and then you get a flat uh, so that you enlarge the root system. You bind them together like you do sometimes with your own hair. And, and uh, put them on top. And then you unfold the roots and then they overlap each other. So you make a rhizome to, um, uh, to stabilize it against the, the wind. And that is then, um, so there's a screen around it. It grows here. 
And this is the, the, uh, after half a year, how it looks like. And how the pockets uh, somehow uh, cut the, uh, the, the wind. And this leads, that, so the attempt of Rotterdam is now to use every public roof like that. It will be monitored from the, from the, uh, the railing so that it becomes like an example of what uh, to do with it. So what is next? Um, uh, just some images, how you know it, how it is in the street now, how uh, in day and night, and I end with the canvas because um, the, the idea is that art, we use more artists to work with us. It, it's, it's urbanism. So it's not uh, a, a, a true Gesamtkunstwerk, but not by one person, but by uh, many of them uh, inside and outside. But also on the outside is an important part. So to, uh, to have all that, is, um, that helps the space that is like the big lantern. So with Pipilotti Riest, um, and we made this, uh, say, tests. What you see is basically that when you project it on the canvas, it's mirrored on top, and it becomes like Alice in Wonderland a little bit, um, because it becomes three-dimensional. And uh, um, that is a surprise that you get when you, uh, that you work on it. So you see Pipilotti, and how we tested it, how you see how it works now. Every night, you, it moves. It has a program of four hours, so that it's uh, no, never the same, uh, made by the software engineers starting with uh, bubbles, and then gradually these bubbles come together into one image. How it, and how it's then also in our mirror, and how ultimately uh, this would be the combination that you see from far. So what is next? Uh, there are reactions now. I, I thought it was good to show it because some of you have not finished visited it. So I thought this may be nice to, to give you a detailed tour. Of course, funny articles in the New York Times and in the art newspaper. Um, and then the next, uh, so this is the, what a mirrored city could do, is what I would say. But also so it has glimpses of a green city, I'm aware. So this green city, and this is a green dip, it was further explored in the valley, and it is opened in a couple of weeks. Uh, uh, to, it's on the, say, the, the Dutch, say, La Défense, um, basically a very ugly uh, uh, office area where they, these people, this, this is the sociology of that area. They have all, all brown shoes and, 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 uh, and they have slim pipes in, in blue and they are too high, high water we call that, and it's a uh, fashion, um, but mostly it's empty. So what is next is, um, uh, this is transformation, it's an important slide, we do have more housing involved, and uh, this is the corner point next to the new soccer fields, and in the future a new dike, on that side for the traffic. So it is a transformation from werken, work, to housing, wonen, and, uh, and next to this, uh, to this uh, kids that uh, play soccer. So what is next? This is the envelope. Yeah, how can an uh, urbanist do this? Huh? this is, <laughs> there's no description, no logic behind it. Anyway, we have to follow it. So we made a splint with culture. There's where the new sapiens comes in. Um, with a, a headquarter building and one, this is what they want. You can, this is, but then you make this basic volume, you give a, a facade out of mirrors to keep the same style as the rest of the, of the financial district, and then cut a little bit away the interior so that you have better balconies, more terraces stacked on top of each other. That you, it's not like Milano, that you have balconies that poop outside. No. You have always a balcony. You can, if you fall, it's only one story, and it. Um, so it's, it, it's not a. Yeah, it, it's safe, and uh, and it has a lot of the and uh, this kind of um, hovering elements for bay windows. So that makes this valley that's planted by Pete uh, Adolf um, from bigger trees to smaller one up on top. Pete has a very funny uh, ideology. He he trains plants like we did with the birch trees on the but on the building, so you see nothing. But he told me in two years it will be big. <laughs> so, so let's see how that works. What's next? This is the object that you do. It's actually a transformation of what we know into what we don't know yet. And um, how that is in detail. And so it is an object. What's next is the renders, uh, how to sell the building. Ah, you guys know that, so uh, not interesting. And what is the next is basically, the, the, I, I think is it, Good to show 
because you are one of your specialties is uh, is the parametric uh, uh, composition. So from the Rhino model, we made this parametric uh, uh, model, which uh, and absorbs the amount of sun hours, uh, the sun loads, uh, the the sizes of terraces checks, the daylight checks is in, and that combine. This was the the moment that we could build it, and that the software helped us a lot to find the the best say. Um, uh, position or the best say uh, model for that um, and that has been even worked out uh, by also manually to optimize in between would be um, uh, and that lead into this architectural model the structural one and uh, the piping so what is next is and uh, how it was the last months how, how it starts to be modeled have to sometimes to hang how stairs are made up I think this is the first building in the Netherlands where you can walk up for six stories and then go down again and you pass by here uh, uh, sapiens naturalis so then the next step is because there were a million um, they, came, they came out out of catalonia the stones so how to cut the stones here and and, uh, and in covid times so they were modeled like every one of the what is it uh, hundred thousand stones were um, uh, done from rotterdam and uh, to have that and you see how they they are positioned, they have get a number. Here to see the numbering tested on a site. Um, this kind of logics uh, come, uh, how they're treated with the plants, how they're applied uh, on every corner. So what is next? This is the situation of last uh, days, um, how it's almost there. So even you can, you live in, a, in an office feeling in, in the outside, but it's it's funny because it's also domestic, and if I go then to the uh, to the to the valley, it starts to look like that, and you see that uh, every house is different, um, and every has another kind of a terrace and another kind of say plantation. So a view from uh, the house is always also different because you can see your neighbor. You can give a glass of wine. Uh, uh, there will be of course barbecue so Saturday afternoon, and then the whole building will be in smoke. Uh, hopefully, uh, and how privacy, um, uh, intimacy, and somehow kind of collectiveness could be negotiated is what this building is uh, about. So the interiors are funny in that way because there's there's no straight edges. <laughs> so the with the interior designer, um, for every owner, we develop like units, um, like a kitchen or a toilet or a, a bed. And then uh, there are always corners left over to do something, uh, to uh, to put a plant or to sit or uh, to have a, a reading corner. So you get an extra that was not um, uh, that's not awarded in, in say in the Bauhaus style. Um, if you would do that, um, and that is what it then gives. And every house is different. And then I take you for a walk because yeah, that's the idea that you can take the stairs, you go further. It's open day and night, and um, Pass by some uh, restaurants, go around the corner, around the street. You see, look further. What's happening above you? Uh, you climb this mountain, uh, the first Dutch mountain, and, and that to to reach then uh, the higher levels. How uh, look back to the tracks? How things are over? How you come to this uh, uh, higher levels where there are ponds there uh, on top of glass, and you can look through the water. Uh, the water is part of the cleaning system of the and the. And the filtration system, and you can see what is the grotto below. You can sit and go further to the next parts of the valley, with a view to the to the kids and the future bridge that uh, connects the, uh, the tribune. And that's how uh, you meet others. Another pond. Um, look down again to another stair. Look how beautiful the surrounding is, and how this comments. Um, um, the, how the bridges span over the pools and how you could see people and the restaurants that are in it to, again to this combination maybe it's a bit romantic i'm sorry but that's uh, at, uh it is um, somehow nice to have a walk there soon with you uh, you can go in again at the counter uh, volume is the grotto where you can look up to the uh, different towers and um, with the water that filtrates uh, um, uh, the light. Um, and what's next then after this uh, is, of course, that this is a, the brochure of the developer. So the funny thing, he put this in as a 
and that he dreams also to continue with that, and um, which is actually quite okay. And we can collaborate with other ar uh, architects on that uh, to uh, to to imagine that uh, next uh, step. That about what is happening now. I uh, and that is inspired by that uh, by the research I showed uh, uh, before. That is and gives also um, um, a potential uh, to um, to ping pong. I use that term also in the studio uh, between research and practice, or to have a dialogue with that. I mean, the valley is, of course, now. Of course, I want to make it better and bigger and, and more green, even. But like I showed in the film uh, uh, to, to, uh, with Iris, um, um, and of course there are funny things happening at the same time. When I made this mount in uh, London, mm -hmm. and then and I discovered that the, the the British culture loves complaining for nothing, and uh, and that they didn't treat the building very well uh, in making it uh, without our knowledge. But still, it was a good text because uh, next uh, next year. Our Mannheim Hill uses that knowledge of uh, of London uh, to uh, to make this uh, little as it is ugly uh, supermarket to give that a uh, kind of collective uh, meaning meaning with the disappearance and its viewpoint over the uh, uh, the city in Mannheim. So what is next? Um, I want to show you because that opens in a month from now um, uh, the Floriada, which is again uh, addressing the green agenda. And also evaluate with you what the do do's and don'ts. What can you do and what do you achieve? Um, and what can't you achieve? Almere is a new town next to Amsterdam. It's built out of this kind of stuff. Uh, so big windows and city architecture. It is made of uh, where all the poor people of Amsterdam had to go uh, in order to survive. And that is uh, honestly still, this has become reality. And um, the urban plan is beautiful because always mini cities in the forest it's with dangers in the forest okay so we have to transform that in this operation so what we're doing we're doubling at the moment uh, uh, the city with uh, a sequence with a new metro line and uh, with five new uh, uh, green cities that are in between the current plan and then these uh, the, the line that continues with a couple of cities i'm not going to explain them all i only talk about but you see them in a the view on from amsterdam the different say garden cities and every city tries to do something nice so there's always like about 40 50 thousand people in this case in the lake which uh, uh, appears like this like a fata morgana cleaning the water of the marker mere with this uh, expo uh, area uh, to attract amsterdamers with this floriade area around the lake that makes the central lake into a circle and with this uh, say freedom area for agriculture in combination with housing on this uh, almost uh, Russian area in, in, in uh, Almere to transform it in, a, in, in Osterwald, another uh, lecture in the future. But Almere Floriade is coming now to a conclusion. Here you see it happening. And uh, this was the idea. Um, this was the bit exactly 10 years ago. And uh, uh, how the proposal was when you're there, you have on the right side the OMA, uh, with its uh, center and then this is uh, our spot uh, that this is our view uh, from a, and we imagined that uh, rem would have this view uh, to the to our site super green so this is the plan a mini grid um, where all the uh, that is where people love plants and where every building loves plant if it's a tulip a wisteria or ivy or bamboo i don't care there's architects that can do it to, to that uh, cover architecture so that you don't have to discuss about style anymore. So this is the Kavel concept from a garden, a building, uh, healthy systems and a path. And then when everybody takes another species, you get this beautiful gardens and the potential of having other kind of concerto hall, other kind of sports hall, other kind of discotheque, other kind of sleeping or hotel or bathing area. And this combination would lead to a richness. What can you do? This is the A till Z environment, the, the, the mini streets. These are my clients, all the plants of the Netherlands. And here in detail, the B and C section, what are uh, uh, usable. And we order them from A till Z, from uh, top to uh, bottom, and then cover uh, or uh, shelter the buildings. And that would mean that the collection is shown. 
from the uh, on the boulevard and here in the negotiations with the developers how that could be and what is next an office it takes 10 years to make so you have to first as you do an office you negotiate we have a lot of scripting um, based also on the green dip uh, or combined with all the species are in these are the a section um, we, we put it in the boundaries how they are scripted so it is like a barcode so at the moment that you start with a and you need more of anemones then brrr, the whole harmonica stretches and that leads to two this is what could be a garden center or what could which is a beautiful thing so we're not that's what the technology we use and then the buildings do the same with modules because they have to rebuild so you're an example how buildings could adapt this barcode uh, or another one on the c section could do that um, and we make uh, three towers to start with the alpha tower and the omega tower and the central part the library so here the alpha tower how it would look like in abs oh i go to the heart where initially we imagined uh, this uh, globe to uh, to put that uh, in a reflecting element um, which is uh, showing uh, business hotel with an, with a courtyard and then uh, uh, a viewing platform it shows all the species inside and outside we used renders to convince the developers you can see them here and we made a university um, which is on that spot wait a minute on that spot you can see it uh, happening so what we did is basically to make a center big floors for coming together structure surrounded with the stairs no stairs inside and uh, make balconies there with species and cover it with uh, in this case liquidambar the species of this zone so that leads to this series that are on that building so that you have this feeling and this uh, walks around it what is next the infrastructure uh, the starting point the next was the plantation in different species um, given by many people this is completely donated all the all the species here how they are put together um, in uh, this barcode area so what is next is the public space here's the plan an atlas has been made of how we do the, the transition from green to uh, to solid in tiles how that would look like in a center to an evaporation with a naming with the plazas um, next to the species what is next to you this is an image of the plantations going on and how it starts to appear with the technology below our buildings are appearing the buildings are not so good because the developers really shit and uh, they do minimize everything what they can do bad contracting uh, the central building was designed like this not the globe social housing so which is in, a, in itself okay but yeah this looks a bit uh, east european and what to do that so what is next uh, we protested found some money and said how can we can this building then be part of uh, the representation of the of the whole arboretum and when this is the tower we projected uh, all the species on the on the tower and that leads to this facades as a starting point so what ha happens when we do the pot work i think it's quite okay and to have everything together um then the, I, I i think i had the worst uh, say lawsuit ever in my life to to uh, to them so in the end it was completely killed and uh, impossible to do so what is next we had to do a print which you can see as greenwashing on the other hand it's uh, how it is um here you can see it happening how does it work i think it's still good to share that with you that if this is the base made out of glass so say not too expensive um we make uh, with a drone the images that we are going to project on that uh, on on that facade so you see it how it becomes uh, the background of the artwork together with uh, 
Alex Veraert from Brussels. Um, then we start with the library of all the plants that are planted, um, get their images, um, make a kind of technology so that you can put it on the facade with the this corner points. Then we script the perspective. So when you stand on the plot side, you can see the, the plant which is close by the biggest and the one which is small on the, um, uh, is further away. So that has been scripted like this. And leads to this uh, bouquet, you can imagine, to reflect what is around you. Uh, this has been then uh, further positioned with the collection and that leads now to this, um, this uh, choreography. This is translated to, um, uh, of all, to, the, to the bottom so that we have uh, on the lowest part the collection that indicates all the species. So what is next? You see how it's tested with the people that live in it. Every house has another bouquet. And how it's now getting there, nearly finished, and how it starts to um, be to represent that uh, collection. Uh, happily, this is the first start. So we are now working on densification uh, with a se sequence of uh, infills, intense negotiation with the uh, investors um, to get now in five years after the Floriada to that environment. What is next is um, I would. Um, the green city is a nice, but the energetic city, uh, just from the table uh, in the office, Thai Power, what's the name uh, uh, these days um, in relation to uh, mainland China, next to the, uh, on the red dot on the coast of uh, uh, Taiwan, uh, we make this uh, industrial plant for the energy company of the state, um, in this kind of landscapes, but on the edge of, the, of, of Taiwan, so that this is the site this is the program, almost nothing. This is the envelope. We were happy to uh, pump it up um, and shape it because of the wind, terrace it, uh, optimize it for the sun, and clad it with solar panels in all the directions so that you get this kind of mountain of, uh, of solar uh, power um, so that helps a bit to so also address that is com uh, on, on it. And by opening up the core, we could enlarge it. The, the center is then the uh, say the, the the place where we know uh, the building. Here's how it's optimized in every uh, panel, uh, how the tec technically positioned, and how it gets there um, and starts construction. And now this mount of um, of solar uh, uh, environments. What is next to end with? Uh, and to there's not a, a super uh, epilogue. Um, but more like an, an, a relation between dressing and, um, and the fact uh, that illustrates uh, the... I end, of course, with glass. Two minutes. Okay. Sounds good. Um, the transparent city. A couple of examples that you know. In my birthplace, uh, on this ugly square, writing a letter to the mayor, uh, you know, almost 30 years ago, uh, answered that it's fine to do something in the end. A village that uh, looked like this, that was bombarded by the Americans and flattened out in modernity. From this to this, uh, we suggested the tower that was too much and negotiated in the end the volume, which actually look like what they have. Um, they have 400 of them. We investigated uh, what they what they, how they are, what characteristics they have, and made uh, measure them all so to calculate the average. The average looked like this. So we could pump it up 200%. And that is the Calimero effect of this village. And then uh, use the material that they like. But then I said, yeah, but transform it into glass to, to make it thin, to make it abstract. So that's what's built, this average farm of, uh, of Schijnel, which is as flush as possible, which is prints all the techniques, but then in a, and then opens itself also on the inside. You can wash your hands, you can eat, you can look 
to your own farm, your average farm. So that was the first example of like what to do in a transparent society. Transparency in philosophical way, because it's about politics, the average politics are done, but then translated into, into glass and how much glass can I uh, imagine? And in the evening, it becomes this lantern. The mayor of Amsterdam thought it would be a good technique also to do it in Amsterdam for this zone, an old, say, street where, people, where workers lived that transformed into the most expensive area of, uh, of the town, uh, say, the Champs-Élysées of uh, Amsterdam or the Ginza of, uh, of the Jordan. This is the next chapter, uh, an, an old building that was quite cool, um, Amsterdamish that was transformed and that American architects wanted to change into something like this, vernacular it's called, one of the worst terms in architecture ever invented. So we said, okay, let's use the old building, pump it up a little bit, use bricks, glass bricks in Italy to make this um, um, memory of the past. You know the story of all the details. What happens is that you can have a view then through the building to the Fondel Park. So what is next? Uh, it was too much of the glass. So we had to make it in brick. And then I calculated how much brick is in the environment. And the average is about 20% of the buildings are brick. So we transformed this, it was impossible. This is hated. So this is 20%. And that was accepted by the government. So what was next is the making. So everything which you extremize is difficult to make. And, but it's also lovely to do that. You do it with, uh, uh, with people in it Italy to, uh, to make it and then to glue it with a dentist um, because that was the only way to have a, a good glue tested in, the, in, uh, in my school on all the directions. In red, it goes wrong. Then we have to stiffen it with extra. Um, then it goes okay. Uh, the wood section and all the panels that have been made. You know how they glue together? Oh, there's a problem with the beam. So we had to make a better beam, which you can see here. Actually quite, a, quite good. But then a problem with the bricks, the most expensive detail, how to make them hollow. So we worked for, I think for two years on the site with this team um, um, uh, of workers to, to, to make it. Every stone costs about four hours to glue it. So what is next? Uh, there it is, how it opens up. How it's solid glass. So how Chanel and now the, the next uh, user is uh, using it. People want to touch it. How the interior is crystalline. How transparency can be beautiful and fills the requirements of uh, this transformation pro project between monument and, uh, and contemporariness. The touching goes on. It, I've never seen so many people touching it. Uh, <laughs> so what is next? Also in the evening, it's nice. And again, people are touching. I can recommend that. We continue with the glass city in Hong Kong with tests for the glass offices to show everything. We continue in Venice and now in uh, Chengdu with this kitchen that you can see everything. Also the, uh, uh, the, 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 all the, the technical parts the oven, how everything should be cleaned, how water pipes are there, how dust is visible. And you can see your, the things you have and you don't have. What is next? Uh, it's the last one of last week in Krasnodar, uh, the Aurora. Krasnodar, I was not allowed to fly over uh, Ukraine, but it's close next to the Crimea, so it's but it's a place where they grow vegetables everywhere. And here you land in Krasnodar. Uh, city looks very Russian um, uh, with cobblestones, not so rich yet, but have beautiful products. On the central axis that uh, stretches, say, between Georgia to, Mos to Moscow, and on that way, you find this beauty. Um, I think one of the exciting, say, cinemas of the Russian time, how it's inside, how you can go up, and already empty for a while. 
the investor wants to make something, a new Aurora out of that. So we could imagine that we use that, um, enlighten basically uh, that sculpture with a new basement, with all the new cinemas that are there, are, are coming there. How to do that, uh, to restore it, uh, to transform it into translucency by this section. On the right side, you see the different programs in the cellar, and that creates this glass, uh, say, roof on top of it. A, a sketch model, how it would use, and how it's now uh, going to be. So with uh, the glass plaza uh, that continues, um, where there are pools to swim in, where there's forest below, and where there's dance, uh, or say there, the, the, the cinema area has this uh, uh, composition. So here am I in a cinema, and how the plaza is part of that. Now, so the, this um, guy said it's um, um, from the agriculture industry. Uh, he wants to give back something. Please test it. So that's what we're doing now in uh, another place. Here you see the other good thing about Krasnodar. It is number three, the customer of bullet bulls, and have the best best stadium in the world. It's exciting to sit in it and to see uh, all the films uh, that are surrounding it and how the artificial grass is made. How um, during every match uh, you taken into some kind of obsessive cheering with each other. And this, uh, uh, this stadium is uh, surrounded, as you can see here, with, um, uh, with a park. The sound is actually very good. Um, which is, wow, weird, I thought. And uh, how does that work? And uh, that this city has such a kind of uh, counter site. Uh, but it comes alive in the night with all the art in it. And actually, it's a quite, quite exciting. It's used so much as an <coughs> escape for <coughs> people. So the next, uh, I say, test of this park will be this uh, Oak Lane here, where the, that should be given back to nature and where the connections are made by a new bridge in the shape of, uh, of the oaks <coughs> in glass. Uh, to test uh, how it would work in that climate and how this is built up. So that is completely scripted. Um, this track to avoid the trees, to script the accessibility in 3D for handicapped, <coughs> to differentiate the balustrades, uh, to and turn it into support by bending it uh, below, uh, by bumping it up for the benches, and by the pattern of uh, the glass that is uh, useful for that, maximum like 120 by 120, by tapered glass beams, and then you have this. Very Russian, but it's uh, 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 and there how it will be in between the trees. Too expensive, but that is uh, part of the testing experience, but it's um, how it will be. Uh, glued um, by the by Dutch engineers to have these benches all around. What is the conclusion of this? I didn't make a conclusion. I just make these two chapters. <laughs> I just had not enough time before I came in the audience to make this possible. But I do think that it shows a little bit this uh, this act of um, inventing things at a school like yours and to uh, find its way completely different uh, later in, in, in a part of the, of the world. Um, and they need each other because I can do certain parts and then it ends here and, it, uh, and I need the reality, the finance and the, and the technology to make it elsewhere. But I do hope that it gives an illustration for the students that participate in the workshop that how your, your work is positioned in, in our work and how it relates back and how it's, uh, uh, and I invite you all later to, uh, to look at, uh, at this. And again, thank you already for, um, for listening to, the, to this after two years of uh, only listening to Zooms. I hope that this uh, helps a little bit. And let's have a beer and some questions. Thanks. Thank you, Winnie. Um, Thank you for uh, uh, 
an extraordinary ability actually to every time deliver a new lecture. That's not an easy thing, but also for the extraordinary ability of, of being very committed in, in much of the work that you're doing, doing in the research part and how this is uh, later applied to the practice. Um, we only have 10 minutes before we have to leave the building because uh, we, ha we have to, to, to be away uh, at 9.30, a bit later. So maybe what I propose instead of having questions is that you stay here to speak with the people within these 10 minutes in a more informal way. Um, and, and you can also take this time to go through the exhibition and, and, and the different um, panels of the work that has been done during the workshop. Um, and yeah, uh, enjoy a bit of informal chatting. How does this sound? Okay. Thank you very much, Winnie. Um, yeah, but stay here, don't go. I just promise that you will be here. <laughs> Thank you everyone from the Zoom. Thank <laughs> you.